Generally, we think of Amazon as a trillion dollar giant that has mostly grown due to its dominance in online retail. But in reality, Nearly half of Amazon's valuation comes from a startup that was founded 12 years after Amazon that is now valued at $500 billion. Not only this, but this startup has also been the lifeline of Amazon, making up for their largely unprofitable retail business. So here's the story of Amazon Web Services. People often see Amazon.com as a super greedy retailer that makes a bunch of money off of essentially slave labor. But really, they've been struggling to profit for basically their entire lifetime. Even as recent as 2017, the retail business lost money as Amazon North America profited $2.8 billion while international Amazon lost $3 billion, meaning the retail business lost $200 million in total. This long-term cash issue was apparent from the late 1990s. So Amazon started looking into other businesses to diversify very early on. After some brainstorming, their first solution to this problem was Merchant.com. They realized that their main issue wasn't pulling in revenue or getting sales as they were getting plenty of this, but rather fulfilling all their orders as this left them with no profit. Now don't get me wrong here, they were very good at fulfilling orders. The issue was that at their current size, they couldn't offer a competitive price to physical retailers and profit. They needed to achieve economies of scale to compete with the big players, but doing so required more profits. They were in a catch-22 situation where they needed to raise prices to profit and invest to achieve economies of scale, but raising prices would slow their growth preventing economies of scale. Considering this, they decided to simply maintain their fulfillment business for now and focus on the online shopping platform side of the business. Their plan was for other businesses to use Merchant.com to build their own online shopping websites and pay Amazon a fee for helping them build their site. This way, they could continue in the same line of business, but they wouldn't have the hassle of fulfillment. Essentially, Amazon was trying to launch Shopify, but as a relatively new company, their development team was very unorganized. So instead of cramming in more work to their existing employees, they decided to start a new segment to develop this idea. Andy Jazzy, the eventual CEO of AWS, says very quietly around 2000, we became a services company with really no fanfare. So clearly, this project was expected to be the bigger picture long-term business that would possibly even replace Amazon.com as it eliminated all the logistics issues. But despite starting a whole new division to handle this job, Amazon still ran into a bunch of development issues as projects took much longer than expected. As development continued to lag, in 2003, the executives decided to take a step back and reevaluate their situation. They listed out what they were good at and what they were not good at, which led them to quickly realize that they were pretty bad at developing a development platform. But they were great at fulfilling and shipping orders as well as running databases to keep track of all of these activities albeit unprofitably. Expanding their online platform didn't work, so they decided to expand their database skills. They didn't exactly know what to do, but they did shift their focus onto the database side of the company away from trying to offer an online shopping website development tool. Ironically, Shopify would launch the following year doing just that and would grow to be valued at over $78 billion. So that definitely was a viable business model, but in the long term, AWS would prove more lucrative. Anyways, despite the shift in focus, it wasn't until further discussion that they realized that most of the internet wasn't even built yet. It took them another three years to build up enough infrastructure, but in 2006, their startup AWS would be the first company to offer a cloud infrastructure service. For the first several years, their services weren't that sought after in the market. This isn't to say that Amazon Web Services wasn't profitable or that it wasn't growing, but it wasn't the full-on transition into the service segment that they had hoped for. In retrospect, this wasn't because the market was small, but because they were just so early onto the scene. In the meantime, though AWS hadn't blown up, Amazon.com was still growing rapidly. So they used the profits from AWS to make up for all the losses from Amazon.com. This new revenue stream enabled Amazon to limit liquidation and raising more funds to keep Amazon.com afloat. I'm sure Amazon.com would have survived either way, 
but AWS gave Amazon the stability that it needed, allowing them to invest billions into planes and warehouses and shoot for ambitious two-day and even one-day delivery times. Luckily for Amazon, things started to change in 2013 when Amazon saw an explosion in the web services business, which has grown over tenfold from $3.1 billion to $35 billion in revenue over just six years. Amazon.com was also growing exponentially during this time period, but as we discussed in the beginning, this increased revenue didn't make them profitable till 2018. Fortunately though, AWS was vastly profitable, allowing them to keep up with the increased losses on the retail side. Even after Amazon.com became profitable in North America, AWS profits far outrank Amazon.com. For instance, in 2018, Amazon's retail side pulled in a whopping $207 billion in net sales. But their operating profit was just $5 billion, leaving their profit margin at a measly 2.5%. AWS, on the other hand, only pulled in $25 billion, which is obviously a lot, but only about 10% compared to their retail income. Despite this, AWS profited more money at $7.3 billion, allowing for a solid 28% profit margin or 11 times higher than the retail business. Evidently, over the past 14 years, AWS has been integral to Amazon as it provided income which they can then turn around and invest in Amazon.com. Without AWS, Amazon would have not been able to invest so much into logistics while their entire retail side was still bleeding money. And today, Amazon would be nowhere close to the 50% market share they currently own. This would also mean that Jeff Bezos, though he'd still be very wealthy, would be nowhere close to being the richest person on earth. And that's how a small startup was able to not only save Amazon, but completely change its trajectory to grow into the behemoth that it is today. Did you guys know that AWS made up 50% of Amazon's market cap? Make sure to comment that down below. Also, if you guys thought this video explained the role of AWS in Amazon survival well, then make sure to drop a like and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, I'll see you guys on the next one.